What's going on, my fellow stock market freaks? Welcome back to Touchdown Trades. We're going to be doing a weekly recap of the stock market, talking about the top headlines, some big moves, and just breaking it all down. We have Tesla, a big China, and Elon problem. Elon has been a major catalyst over the last several years for Tesla, the company, and the stock. But that may all be coming to an end. We have the overall market, the S&P 500, right back up at all-time highs after selling off last week. Lucid Motor stock selling off once again as the company raises more capital via an offering. Let's break all of these stories down. First of all, let's talk about Lucid Motors, one of the darling EV stocks that made a monster move post SPAC announcement, few hundred percent run, a monster move. Now, the concept of the vehicle, I like it. Is it the next Tesla? Hell no, it's not the next Tesla. And that's why a lot of these EV companies are seeing these big moves, is because investors have that FOMO. They feel like they missed out on Tesla, so they're going to jump on the next big thing. Lucid Motors is not the next big thing. Why is it not the next big thing? Because it is a niche vehicle manufacturer. I'm going to do a standalone video on why EV auto manufacturers are a little bit overhyped right now, and that probably will be coming out this weekend. But just look at the price point of these vehicles, $77,000. It's a luxury vehicle auto manufacturer. It's a niche company, and they sell a niche product. There's nothing wrong with that, and I think Lucid Motors can be successful in selling these higher-end EV cars. But auto manufacturers have a historically low profit margin, number one. And number two, most people can't buy $75,000 cars. That being said, right now they have a market cap of $61 billion on sales of less than a million dollars. They are a company that has no track record. They are a company that is working out the kinks of getting the manufacturing and development process down Building these factories that they're going to need to spit out these cars costs money. And that's where the problem comes into play. Remember how difficult it was for Tesla to get those gigafactories up and running. All these short seller attacks talking about how they were just bleeding money. And Tesla was bleeding money. But they figured out, luckily, there's a lot of government subsidies that helped Tesla get to where they are today. And I'm not hating on Tesla. I've been a Tesla owner for a long time. I've owned Tesla stock for two, three years now. But there was times where even I thought Tesla stock was in trouble, but they made it out the other end. Those same government subsidies are not the same as they were when Tesla first got on board. Lucid Motors is going to have to raise capital again and again and again in order to get where they need to be. And sure, there's nothing wrong with raising capital, but it does affect the stock's price. And every time we see Lucid Motors come out with one of these stock offerings to ramp up production, ramp up manufacturing, or whatever they're using the money to do, doesn't matter. The stock's probably going to drop. And that is exactly what happened. We opened up uh, 8% down yesterday, down a little bit on the day today, and off the highs of that $65 mark by a considerable amount. Right now, I think it has like a $65 billion market cap. In my opinion, this is a $20 billion company max, maybe even less than that. I am a seller of Lucid Motors, and I am a seller of common consumer EV manufacturers. Now, there are some EV stocks that I'm a buyer of right now, but Lucid Motors is not one of those, and I'll be talking about the ones that I am buying in the video that I drop either Saturday or Sunday talking about the EV market as a whole. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, so Lucent Motors, another stock offering. I think we continue to see a stock offering a couple times a year for the next couple of years. That's going to dilute the stock, and it's probably going to cause the share price to retreat down under $20 per share. So the S&P, the SPIs, the overall market back at all-time highs. It's just crazy to me. The market was looking for the inflation numbers to come out today. Everybody was watching what the report was going to say, and it was bad. It was really bad. It was a steaming pile of shite. But because it matched expectations, 
Investors thought inflation was already going to be bad. So we were already expecting the worst. Because it matched expectations, investors actually bought up the market. And we are closing right back up at those all-time highs. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers that came out of the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. It showed yet another multi-decade high rate of inflation for November. The CPI climbed by almost 7% in November compared to the same month last year, making the fastest annual increase in inflation since June 1982. These numbers are unprecedented. It's crazy the amount of inflation that we're seeing. So according to Bloomberg data, inflation accelerated 6.2% year over year from the prior month. And even excluding more volatile food and energy prices, the so-called core CPI rose by about 5% over the last year, the fastest increase in about three decades. All right, so this guy Will from uh, Williamton Trust, he's the chief economist over there, said what we're looking for is deceleration as we go forward over the course of 2022. And I think that's what most investors are looking for. What this market today tells me is that investors knew it was going to be bad, but just how bad was it going to be? And it was pretty bad. But now we have kind of that benchmark and what we're going to look for going forward. All right. So everybody's saying that inflation is going to drop right now. It was 6.8% year over year what we're going to be looking for over the next couple of quarters is for those numbers to slowly decline but it needs to be gradual the fed can't just taper off super fast stop buying assets and just pull the rug out from this economy it needs to be gradual but we do need to see those inflation numbers start to retreat normal levels most retail traders are thinking that it, this inflation is going to result in a market crash and i don't necessarily think that's true when inflation goes up right things cost more money it's just what it is right so that should result in assets costing more money too. In the simplest form, milk is going to cost more and Apple stock is uh, going to cost more because Apple phones cost more. There's going to be more revenue for Apple stock and that's the way things work. So while inflation is a, b a bad thing for the economy, it's a bad thing for your average American person who has to go out and buy these goods for more expensive price points it's not necessarily going to result in a market crash all right next a funny story let's talk about peloton stock and what just happened to them via sex in the city reboot all right so peloton has had a rough couple of months making highs during the peak of the pandemic people were staying at home buying peloton bikes and their numbers were looking really good but it was all fugazi. It was all fugazi. It was a mirage. It was a facade. It was fake because people were buying more bikes because they're at home. When they go back to work, when the gyms open back up, people weren't going to buy as much bikes. That's just the way it works. And Peloton stock has came off the highs of $171 per share. <laughs> all the way down to $38 per share. Well, the other day there was a leak. Sex in the City is rebooting and there was a leak that in one of the episodes, all right, let me try to find it. In one of the episodes, Mr. Big. Mr. Big is a character that has been in Sex in the City and he's been clapping those cheeks. He's been clapping cheeks for many, many years. No longer, no longer, because Mr. Big just got his cheeks clapped on a Peloton bike. So there is a leak that in the new Sex in the City reboot, Mr. Big dies while riding a Peloton bike. He actually has a heart attack in the midst of riding his Peloton. Peloton immediately dropped, it nosedived, 11% after news of this came out. I think it's kind of funny. It's down 5% today. It's had a rough, rough ride, and it's actually coming into a point where I'm starting to take a look at it, and I've never been a big Peloton fan. I think the model of selling services like a subscription service is a really good model. I you guys know I love software as a service, and that's basically what Peloton is. They're not selling bikes to make money. They're selling bikes in order to then sell their classes, and 
it's a limited niche market, but when you're starting to see these price points, you got to take a look at it as a longer term stab. If we get down into the 20s, then I'm going to be a buyer of Peloton, but I'm still going to wait as I think there's a little bit more downside. We do have support down here in the low 30s. That's probably where I'll start, maybe taking some nibbles and then going from there, cost averaging in. But still not a buyer quite yet, but I thought that was a funny story. Mr. Big, clapping cheeks, no more. Talk about Tesla stock and their Elon problem and their China problem. Elon Musk tweeted that he is thinking about quitting his jobs. What that means, we don't know. But the last time he asked Twitter of what his followers thought, he posed the question, should I sell 10% of my Tesla stock, yes or no? Uh, more than 50% said yes, and he ended up selling 10% of his Tesla stock. I think Elon Musk is having a midlife crisis. He's become more political, more vocal in political types of conversation. And sure, that's his right, but as a CEO of Tesla, you better watch yourself because look at China. Tesla's China numbers have dropped considerably. And a lot of this is due to increased competition from the Chinese EV manufacturers. But some of it could be due to the fact that China, the Communist Party, controls everything. And if they don't want you selling your cars in China, you're not going to sell your cars in China. Look what's happened with Enos Cantor or Enos Freedom plays for the Boston Celtics. So Enos Cantor is a professional basketball player, plays for the Boston Celtics of the NBA. He has been very, 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 very vocal against China and China's treatment of the Muslim Uyghur population, and they're putting them in like concentration camps. It's some pretty sick stuff. Enos Cantor is Muslim, and he has came out against China's treatment of these people, and China did not like it. So what did they do? They banned all... Boston Celtics basketball games from being broadcast in China. The NBA makes a bunch of its money from China. So this is a big deal for the NBA. Why does this apply to Tesla? Elon Musk and Tesla, a large percentage of their vehicle sales come from China. If we look at the numbers, Tesla's China sales have been dropping and dropping fast. All right, so Tesla is witnessing a decline in its sales in China. This article says, according to reports published by a Chinese trade group, the automobile company is losing its ground in the world's largest market for traditional and electric vehicles. All right, so the reported local sales of China made vehicles plunge 69% from 28,000 in June. This is a big deal. And a lot of it could be due to the fact that there's more competition from Chinese EV auto manufacturers. Another thought is that if China, if the government doesn't want you to sell cars in China, you're not going to sell cars in China. Elon Musk has become more and more vocal from a political aspect, and he's a little bit more right-leaning, it seems like. He's not for taxes. That's obvious. He doesn't like high taxes. He took shots at Bernie Sanders. I'm not saying that it matters which way he leans politically. I'm just saying if your company is based in the United States and you have uh, dependence on China, you better tread lightly. And we have news today that Elon comes out and says that he's thinking about quitting his jobs. We don't know what that means, but the last time he submitted a Twitter poll, he asked his Twitter users, should I sell 10% of my Tesla stock? They answered yes. What did he do? He sold 10% of his Tesla stock. So... He comes out today, tweets, and says, should I quit my jobs? He doesn't say with Tesla. He doesn't say with SpaceX. He doesn't say with what. It's weird, and we'll have to keep our eye on it. If Musk quits Tesla, it's definitely not good for Tesla, I don't think. I don't think there's any way Tesla is where it is today without this dude. With a company like Amazon, Jeff Bezos steps down. It's really not that big of a deal. But Tesla... Elon is so involved in Tesla, I think it would send some shockwaves. Right now, I'm looking to buy and invest in companies that have been beaten down, value plays. We already talked about Peloton. Peloton's one that I don't really like. I've talked about it several times on the channel, 
but there becomes a point where it's too big of a value to ignore and i think we're approaching that point so i'm looking to start at taking some nibbles just some nibbles in my long-term portfolio of peloton we have robin hood robin hood's another one of those stocks that has been beaten down pretty bad kathy wood bought 20 million plus last week she continues to hold stand firm with robin hood we're under $20 a share, the lowest the stock has ever traded. If you're looking at Robinhood five years from now, it's not going to be trading at $20 per share. So this is almost a sure thing for me. You're probably not going to see those 10, 20x returns, but it's a two-bagger, three-bagger over the next few years. That's going to wrap up the video, a couple of value stocks, talking about the headlines. If you like this format, make sure to hit that like button for me. I love all of you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until next time, peace.